that's that's uh, the other reason I I, I I started this newsletter was I, I felt like I could um, I, my story source newsletter uh, tries to help have a create a conversation where uh, journalists like myself and PR people like you Steve can have this conversation and figure it out because right now I, I think that lags behind a lot of the other advances I don't think PR has really figured out how to interact with journalists right now. For instance, you know, I'm a freelancer, but um, but uh, so many PR people still interact with me as if I were, you know, uh, behind an editorial desk somewhere, you know, as if I were, you know, part of uh, the LA Times or something. And that's just not how it how it works, you know. So I get pitched irrelevant stuff all the time. I get I get pitched stories that I would never, you know, breaking news that I, I don't tend to cover because, you know, as a freelancer, I tend to do, um, you know, feature stories. As a freelancer, your your editors need more lead time from you, so you don't cover breaking news. Um, so so some of those things may be for traditional journalists. I think PR is figuring out how to manage this in for traditional journalists in a, a journalist 2.0 world, you know, traditional journalists with social media tools at their disposal and things like that. I don't think they figured out how, how best to interact with all of us other strange journalists, you know, doing, you know, people like me who are entrepreneurs, other people who maybe are just part-time because they've decided to get out of the rat race and, and their wife or husband, you know, works in a bank and so they just want to work 20 hours a week or what have you. But each of those people are, are going to have, each, each will have different needs. Um, so I think part of the burden that PR is going to have to, to wake up to is you can't just open up beacons and you can't just compile a list from say, you know, the trade. So I'm going to CES next week, you know, the big consumer electronics trade show. And, you know, I will get, I, I still get pitches way outside my coverage area from the last time I went, you know, you get the shotgun pitches that I, I would never, I would never in a million years do anything with, you know, and, and so, in a way, PR then becomes almost like spammers when you do that sort of thing, because, I, and for me, now I have tools at my disposal, I have my database, if you send me five, <laughs> if you send me five off topic pitches that just show you know nothing about me, you get black blacklisted in my database, then you get a filter in my inbox, and you just go to the trash, you know, um, mm -hmm. and I, I bet I'm not the only one out there doing that, I bet there are plenty of people, I know I did that behind my desk too, when I was a uh, on the other side of the editorial desk, editing magazines, you know, PR people who were just always creating headaches or just way off target, you just filter them out. So I think the big burden for PR now, the big way they're going to change their workflows is they'll have to be kind of like doing what I'm doing. They're going to have to, they're going to have to target individual journalists or, and just learn more about them. Target specific pubs and learn who the players are. Just having a name and an email. That means nothing anymore. You've got to see what these people write about. You know what? What? You know? Are you an Apple? Are you an Apple fanboy? Or are you an Apple hater? You should know that, depending on what the story is. You know, especially if you're pitching me some mobile angle. You know, it's probably valuable to know that I have an Android. You know, not a not a um, an iOS. So I, I think uh, part a big part of the relation. And, Here's the good news. The bad news is PR isn't doing this, but very few people are doing what you do, Steve, and, and you know, taking the time to get to know journalists and uh, picking their brains and, and, and just simply asking. I, I, I don't get to ask this enough. You know, I get asked, and I'm always surprised when I do, just asking, hey, how can we better work with you? Um, that's what PR is going to have to spend more time doing is building those relationships learning who these people, learning who the journalists are and just doing relationship management. And spending more time, um, you know, like I talked about how I don't sell anymore because, um, because you know, I, I do all this outreach to the PR community. Well, I think PR can can take that same approach. I know when, when a PR person does me a good favor, does some, you know, refers a customer to me um, for, say, white paper projects or what have you, when their pitches come through, of course I read them more. You know, it's the rule of reciprocity. It's marketing 101, sales 101. Um, yet, I, so for, yet I don't see a lot of PR people doing that. Maybe they do it around trade shows, inviting you to a party or what have you. Um, 
and there are reasons for that. You know, in the past, that would have been frowned upon, you know, like, you know, sending a bottle of scotch over to a reporter to get better coverage. You don't want to do that. It's too blatant. But there are, are different things. You know, reciprocity comes in for just um, retweeting. Say you say you want to get in CIO, just picking a few editors there and retweeting or uh, journalists there, your PR, you're, you're going to target journalists as well as the editors. Um, as a journalist, I'm always more thinking about the editors. But um, just follow the ones who are critical to your coverage area. Start retweeting their stories. Start commenting on their stories. Start linking to and recommending their stories. That reciprocity will build up. So uh, the, the good news for PR, the bad news for PR is uh, most people aren't figuring this out, um, and there's too little of this. The good news for PR is this whole banks on the, the, you know, this is in the PR wheelhouse. These are the skills that that PR people have to begin with. PR people mm -hmm. are natural relationship mongers, you know? So um, so the good news is PR, uh, the kind of things that will help elevate the PR journalist relationship as we move forward um, are things that, that, uh, that PR, there are skills that PR is better at than we journalists tend to be. I know these are skills that I've had to, you know, I've had to learn more and I've had to force myself to do because, you know, I'm the type who'd be content to just hole up in my office and be antisocial and, and you know, just right away all day and wouldn't think twice about it. Um, so, you know, uh, the good news for PR is you know how to do this stuff. You just have to start doing it and start at, at, and start getting, of course, buy-in from, you know, from the people above you to, to prove the value. And right. all it would take is one test case. One client, you're not getting good coverage for, you know, find that find that unique story angle, target a pub, and, and just practice following a few journalists, retweeting their stories, commenting, linking. And then I bet you're good, your chances of getting your, your client covered in their next their next story uh, where, where they would fit in are going to be much, much higher.